Um, We're going to open up the meeting now for January 19th, 2022. Uh, Janet, roll call. Commissioner Sotomayor? Present. Commissioner Harris? Present. Mayor Dunn? Present. Commissioner Dickinson? Present. Commissioner Waymeyer? Okay, if everybody would stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everybody. As we just uh, came off the celebration and remembrance of Martin Luther King, I want to share a quote with you from him. He says, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? With that thought in our minds, let us pray. Lord God, I give you thanks for this day. I give you thanks for these dedicated people, not only the commissioners, but all the support staff that is here this day uh, for this business to be conducted. And God, I give you thanks that, that these fine people can answer the question that they are working diligently for the people of Franklin County. So God, I give you thanks and praise for them, for the dedication to this county and to the people of this county. God, may you watch over their business. May you guide them with wisdom. May you guide them with collaboration. And if it be possible, with unity. But in all things, may they have civility and respect for one another. God, we give you thanks for the blessings that you give us, for the blessing of this day, for the cold wind from the north. We give you thanks for the very air that we breathe, for the life that allows us to get up in the morning. We give you thanks and praise in the name of the one that we call Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Mark. I have a core for response. Uh, Derek, do you have anything at this time? Uh, not this morning, Roy. Thank you. Okay. Any public comment today, Janet? We have one, one public comment. Okay, public comment. Citizen desiring to speak on an item not on the agenda may do so at this time. Discussion is limited to five minutes, and the commission will not take action or discuss items at this time. During discussions should be limited to matters of county commission business and public comment is not permitted in regard to personnel matters or on pending legal matters. Items introduced under public comment may become a general item at a later date. Norman. Morning, Norman. Good morning. I thought for a minute we was back to three commissioners. I apologize for not sharing my thoughts with the commission in the last month. I've been off and working. It's that kind of time for me to give people a little break because uh, uh, they had made some mistakes and they needed to think about what they had done. I followed the uh, meetings online and was astonished at some of the choices that the commission had made, and some are absolutely absurd in my viewpoint. Your administrator's contract. Can't imagine paying somebody for six months when they screw up and you fire them. And then they turn around and extend it for a year. What are you going to do? Pay two salaries? Because you might need a, a, an attorney to advise or do without one. I don't think it's right for the people to, to be so generous. If he... <coughs> uh, 
in my humble experience, it makes no sense. Our elected county attorney happens to be too busy representing other counties to do what used to be his job as a representative and advisor to the commission. Is our system broken? But a little bit twisted and abused. What we must have done, we have to live with, you and me and others. I think changes are in order. We need to think about the future of Franklin County and more over the future of the nation. The f flu thing has disturbed the normal routine of many lives. I don't understand why so many people are wrecked. One must <clears throat> be unable to go on trying to keep things normal. I went to the transfer station Monday with a load of material. Trucks went in and out, but not the public. Why would that be? They have trucks going in and out. Evidently, they're collecting a fee. When the scare, the flu scare began, I tried to get a mask or a face survey. I tried every place in Ottawa, Lawrence, and even Kansas City. The same excuse. The masks were sent to the hospitals. We need the, we need the mask to stop it before we get to the hospital. And of course, the mask in the hospital isn't used anyway. In my lifetime, I've had the flu many times. It was wise, it is wise to protect others by wearing a mask because we, when we talk, put out a vapor and it's probably live virus. Use a mask. Be careful, and don't let America be maimed with the fear of the flu. Thank you. Thank you, Norm. On the consent agenda today, will be uh, consider and approve of the claim vouchers and tax change orders. Uh, One million four hundred eighty-two thousand three hundred fourteen dollars and twenty cents. Exchange order of positive seventy-six dollars and ninety-two cents. Minutes of the January second, twenty twenty-two meeting. Minutes of January tenth, twenty twenty-two reorganization meeting and be soliciting bids for replenishing tires. I have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion, approve. Second. Okay, I got a motion and a second, uh, roll call. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Chair Dunn? Yes. Just one item on this. Uh, David, you know, soliciting bids for the tires, or uh, you having trouble getting any uh, certain sizes or anything like that when you do these bids? Um, we haven't so far. The prices have, are creeping up uh, like we are experiencing with almost all of our commodities. Uh, but as far as being able to get the tires, uh, we've been able to get the ones that we've we've put out for bid. So that hasn't been a problem to date. I can't promise that uh, we won't have trouble this time around. Okay. I'm not expecting any, but it, it's certainly possible. Okay, first item on the agenda for today. Approval of Tyler Technologies annual software maintenance invoice for Good morning, Public Safety. 
much like last week, this is just an annual invoice that we usually have in January. I usually have it bundled up with the rest. This one I did not receive until after we had already got that item on the agenda. This is in line with what we've seen the last several years. It's a 5% increase over years past. Of that total, $12,714.85 will be paid for out of emergency communications funds. The balance is paid out of the IT software line. Uh, this application, as noted in the cover letter, is primary, primarily used by the Sheriff's Office, uh, EMS, and Emergency Communications. We do have a couple others that are using it as well as Juvenile Emergency Management and a limited function. We also host the application uh, for City of Ottawa, Wellsville PD, Ottawa Fire, who they pay their own maintenance for their portions of it. We just host the system uh, for us to share that data amongst each other. So. Increase is 5%, which is what we've seen over the last three or four years with this invoice, and it is held flat at that 5% increase. Any questions uh, on this? I'd be happy to make a motion to approve the uh, payment of the invoice for the annual support services from Tyler Technologies. Just want to add, Mr. Mayor. Just want to add that this amount is $40,722.80. 83 cents. A motion and a second. Janet? Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Waymire? Yes. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yes. Chair Dunn? Yes. Thank you, Commissioners. Well, that's all we have on the, on the business side of it. Uh, on to staff reports, uh, Derek? Yeah, thanks, Roy. A um, few things. Next week, we'll probably have the uh, lease between us and the Historical Society on the agenda. Um, the Historical Society board approved it at their recent meeting. And so at this point, um, we just need to talk through it as a board um, once we execute that. Um, technically, that process can start in terms of helping, you know, the historical society move. I know Brandon's still looking into a flooring solution. I mean, it's something that we'll work on over the course of 22, I'm sure. But um, in terms of kind of the legal procedure, the, the lease will be really the last part that we need to take care of on that. So it's my intention to have that in front of you next week. Um, Countywide software, um, our committee has kicked around potentially um, having a study session on Monday to come in and discuss that. I think Dustin and I are going to get together after this and, and decide whether or not that's feasible. But we've been through numerous product demonstrations at this point, and the intention for the study session is to have uh, numerous members of the leadership team come in and talk about, kind of explain to the five of you what the software brings, how it changes operations, how it offers up efficiencies. And so that may very well be on your study session on Monday. Dustin and I will talk about that. Um, we continue to, to be hit hard with COVID. Um, it's what I was doing this morning, um, another staffing issue came up. It, it is hitting the county at all levels. I think David will probably talk to you about the transfer station, um, but it's, it is just affecting numerous departments. And so our, our numbers are as high as ever. Um, our positivity rate is higher than ever. And so I would just ask that the five of you, along with the public, be understanding of where we're at because we're no different than, than any other organization, any other company, and any other state in this country. I mean, we're being hit equally as hard. And, and unfortunately, um, because we try to operate a fiscally responsible government, we don't have people on standby. We don't have backups that can come in when, when our people go down. We just don't, we can't staff to the level that would survive in a, you know, a global pandemic. And so there's just, 
we're at a point where operations have to be suspended because we just don't have staff. And so um, I'm sure, you know, Casey can talk more about that if she chooses. The last thing I would say is we, we started kind of kicking around a retreat a little bit, um, looking at like third and fourth, but I don't know with each passing week as our numbers continue to rise, I just don't know even if we could space out and keep our distance, I don't know that it's gonna be advisable. I think we need to just wait and see what our positivity rate does, what our numbers do, and what our operations look like. So, any questions for me about any of that? I think it's uh, pretty universal about the COVID and, and uh, yeah. keeping businesses open and keeping schools open. And I know the country schools here are closed, uh, I think, this week because of it's either staffing or the students are out or on quarantine and it, uh, yeah. it just can't get enough people to... Yeah. You know, to do do the job, so you just have to close for a little while. Yeah, yep, yep. That's right. Thank you, Derek. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, Roy. That's all I have. Uh, Sheriff Richards. Good morning. We also are not immune from uh, from the illnesses. Um, this long weekend, I, there was a day that um, I. It was me and a lieutenant and a sergeant working in the jail, and I got relieved by the undersheriff. So um, that's kind of kind of the trend that has been. Our testing that we've put in place, um, as we talked last week, has been effective because our staff is really good about about doing the testing, and then when they're positive, they go home so that they're not infecting anyone else. So um, the five day. Um, turnaround on those has been is helpful as well to get people back quicker so um, but we're just going to continue to to battle some of some of those things um, this week uh, yesterday we had a uh, farewell um, for uh, Sergeant Jason Bryan and Corporal Tara Brooks uh, both of them um, have uh, left the sheriff's office and they've moved on to a to another agency uh, we're gonna gonna miss their experience and uh, and what they provided to us, but uh, we wish them both very well. Um, we have a process uh, that's going now. We have good candidates in, in our process to re for replacements, so um, we don't anticipate there being, being any shortages in our patrol division at all. So um, I'll have answer any questions that you may have for me. Uh, but I, had, I imagine it's tough doing, doing the jail because you just can't, close it down in quarantine and if you don't have staff so it's a uh... yeah we um, the jail is one of the things that we have to maintain um, we don't by statute technically have to have a I guess a road road patrol we have to respond to things but um, and we're responsible to do that we have that re requirement on us um, but if something is going to work short then um, it won't be the jail um, we have we have to maintain that and we have an obligation to the people men and women that are in there to make sure that we have the staff on on hand to take care of them so um we sometimes we just have to shuffle people around thank you uh, casey morning commissioners um I will just put into a little perspective our last um, active, high active case count before we got to these numbers um, was 297 and right now we're at 650. So almost more than double um, of, at our highest point and our new cases for the week last week was 479 and before we would average or a high of our average would be like 150 in a week so it's really um, blown up we the health department has gone to some at-home tests to try to um, cut down on the number of tests going to the state because the state's so far behind and getting us results it's really taking at least five days 
to get results sometimes even more. Um, so Dr. Ransom um, approved doing these at-home tests and the, they still come through to the trailer. Patients come to the trailer and they explain how to do it. They're very easy to administer. People can take them home, do the tests themselves, and then they're encouraged to report their results to us via the website or they can call in and tell us their results. Um, so that is going well. That started yesterday. They did a few on Friday, but mainly just started pushing that yesterday because we were closed for testing on Monday for the holiday. Really all I have. I had a shirt on the news yesterday that the government's going to send out four free uh, at-home test kits. Uh, yeah, anybody can go online and sign up for those four free at-home test kits, and we would encourage everyone to do that. There are, it is really hard to find at-home test kits right now. Um, I know that our Walgreens and Price Chopper have been keeping them in stock, but it seems like as soon as they get them in stock, they're gone from the shelves because people are stocking up, so they have them. Um, so um, I would encourage everyone, I believe it's covidtest.org to sign up, but we'll share that on our website and social media so people can find it easily. Also heard on the news about contact tracing. Some, some places have given up on it because... Yeah. People aren't calling in and say, yes, I'm positive. And, yeah, so and, uh, contact tracing is different than case investigation. So contact tracing is right when somebody tests positive, that person um, should be reporting who all they've been in contact with. And in the early days of COVID, the health department would then reach out to all of those individuals and say, you've been in close contact, you should quarantine. And the schools do that as well with their students. Um, but contact tracing has, or just because of the huge numbers, um, it is, it's, pretty much impossible and we just have to encourage people to do the right thing and reach out to those individuals that they've been in close contact with in the last 48 hours before they test positive or become symptomatic and let them know that they were possibly exposed. This is Commissioner Dickinson. When it takes five days to, or more to get your results back, the contact tracing is kind of not, not doable because by then it's way too late. Yes. And that's why we are trying to do some different things with testing to try and speed that up. Um, the at-home tests have become way more um, accurate than they were at the beginning of COVID. And so they're just strongly encouraging those quick tests to know one way or the other so they can let other individuals know when we try to slow down the spread. Thank you, Kate. It, it used to be when you had it. It used to be we had a quick test, and then I would encourage you to come to the trailer and get a, 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 a other test to confirm it, but you're not doing that anymore? No, we are not. If you, especially if you're symptomatic and you test positive, it, you are positive, and again, you should trust that rapid test. But Dr. Ransom has said over and over in meetings that um, they just, the technology has changed so much in two years that those tests are um, way more accurate, and he feels confident in us using those quick tests to get results. Any other questions of Casey? Thank you, Casey. Thank you. Uh, Dustin, you have any, any more? Uh, David? Okay, so uh, this past weekend we had another snow event. Uh, so our, we had Roden Bridge and Noxious Weed staff out uh, starting 5 a.m. Saturday morning. Uh, they worked about 11 hours to um, uh, take care of that storm. And then we had a smaller crew out on Sunday uh, because of the wind that was associated with this storm, we had uh, some snow drifts on our paved roads and, and whatnot. And so we had a smaller crew that worked um, uh, about eight hours on Sunday to knock those back so that the roads would be uh, free and clear from those snow drifts. Uh, and then, of course, we were uh, on our gravel roads yesterday whenever we returned to work to take care of any um, uh, snow drift or other issues on our on our gravel roads. So those all should be taken care of by now. Um, and so this is the second snow event uh, of the year. Seems like uh, they only they're coming on holiday weekends, which uh, is kind of tough for our personnel. But they uh, they rise to the occasion and get that taken care of. 
kind of in between the uh, uh, events, in addition to uh, hauling gravel like we do just about every day, uh, they installed or repaired six entrances or crossroad tubes, uh, completed a small ditching project on, on Eisenhower and, and uh, worked on a bridge around, silt around a bridge on Marshall East of Nevada. So uh, we stay busy with that sort of, th sort of stuff. Uh, yesterday we um, uh, took the snow plows out and all the, the material spreaders out of the truck so that we could utilize those again to start hauling rocks some more. Um, and then we also uh, yesterday did some patching on our blacktops in a number of locations. We, we've got a lot of more of that to, uh, to be taken care of. Um, Derek mentioned it a second ago and, and several of you are aware, but we did have to close our landfill yesterday due to uh, staff shortages. Um, uh, totally related to the COVID pandemic. Uh, so we had, um, um, we do have one person that is out. They should be done with their uh, quarantine period um, yet this week. And so they'll be back to work. Um, and we're waiting on a test result this morning to uh, determine if we're going to be able to open up today. We, um, as soon as we found out what was going on, we notified all of the trash haulers um, uh, directly. Uh, sometimes it took multiple calls to get a hold of somebody, but we did reach out to everybody that we could. And then we also, uh, with Casey's help, put something on, on our uh, website and social media. <clears throat> and then as soon as we get the word as, as to whether or not we're going to be able to open up today, we'll uh, <clears throat> again contact all those trash haulers uh, personally and then uh, also post something Facebook and, and uh, the web page. So uh, we have been, uh, I would say, over the last uh, two years through this pandemic, we've been awfully fortunate. This is the first time that we have had to uh, stop one of our services altogether. Uh, we've had some, some uh, modifications to our services and that sort of thing. But this is really the first time in that entire uh, time period that we've had to uh, stop offering a, a particular service. And uh, we hated to do it, but it, it really comes down to uh, being um, uh, proactive for our employees and doing what's best for them and the public. So uh, as soon as we get the green light, we will open back up and it'll be business as usual. Happy to, um, excuse me, happy to answer any questions that you may have. It's the first time I've, that I've been around that I've heard of a department having to close down for any reason. So yeah. it doesn't happen very often. So, And we hated to do it, but again, it was the most prudent thing to do and uh, the safest thing by far to, to do. And there are other options for the trash haulers, and we tried to let them know as early as possible so that they could they could adjust their um, their business, uh, so it wouldn't be any more disrupted than than it had to be. And we'll we'll try to get them back to normal as quickly as possible. Thank you, Janet. Do you have anything? So, despite me being gone last week um, and some additional shortages in the courthouse, um, the treasurer's office and the clerk's office did end the year last week, and so we're going to be working this week to get budgetary numbers out to everyone so they can um, start their internal reporting for their different departments. So, going forward with their new budgetary numbers for this year. So, um, much like David. Um, we're just trying to follow all of the guidance. Um, everyone in the courthouse is really working together and um, helping out in, in different places that they normally don't while we cover people who are gone and um, just really trying to maintain um, service level in the courthouse while we have outages. So just trying to keep everything going and working smoothly and I was, I was looking at the map this morning of the new re redistricting proposal in the state legislature, and it's, it, uh, to me, it doesn't look good for Franklin County. I like really, I really haven't taken a look at it yet. Um, I like they want to put us in with Johnson County, and 
I would expect that that's where we would see all the changes is in the more populated areas. Um, I know that um, some, you know, people in our area have put information out to the legislature to try to maintain what we have because I think most people in this area feel like we're well represented with the majority of our county being represented by one main person and then obviously over on um, the side that Don represents is completely um, represented by another one. So it's a good division um, where we do have a couple of representatives in the House and um, one in the Senate. So uh, we have put that information out to our legislature, the legislators that we'd really like to see that stay the same. So hopefully they they honor that and keep us kind of where we're at. But I'll be I'll be watching that closely as they kind of debate that Good we don't deal. look for really an easy process um everyone in in my circle my list serves that i follow and stuff we're all looking for this ultimately to end up in the courts again and be kind of a long process uh, it does have to it does have to end um fairly quickly in, in may because we've got um, filing deadlines for um, the, a lot of those seats in the legislature. So those are going to be coming up this year. So we need, really need to get the redistricting complete. Did we, did we uh, look at our uh, representative districts for the county commission as far as uh, changes since the 2020 census? So we usually do that at the uh, your reorganization meeting. However, we didn't because we can't make any changes to the county commission districts until the redistricting at the state level is done. So, um, like I said, like my county clerks group, we're kind of following this to make sure that we're meeting all of our statutory requirements to look at the county commission districts. Um, you guys will recall that's on your agenda every year at the reorganization meeting to whether we want to set that on a study session or not. Um, I usually do some front end work before I put that on the study session, before your reorganization meeting, just to kind of give you guys some information. So I do look at it um, every year based on the numbers that I'm, that I'm given um, by the certified population at the state every year. But we will be looking at that after redistricting is done according to the census numbers. Oh, okay, that's coming up a little later then. We, we should have been working on this last year, but due to the delay in the census because of the pandemic, the numbers weren't available when they should have been. The legislature was out of session by the time the numbers were available. And so now here we are <laughs> trying to get this settled, so. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Janet? Okay, uh, Paul, do you have anything for us today? Okay. Come up to the podium. <laughs> Paul, I was reading in the paper where uh, members of the state finance council, including Republicans and Democrats from the Senate and House, adopted a recommendation to set aside $100 million towards the economic development, expansion of structures, and attracting businesses and jobs. This sounds like this falls right into the topic we had not too long ago about what we could do out here to attract. And one of them was putting in a building on part of it. And this seems like a golden opportunity. I mean, we've got the prize position out here and we wouldn't have the city and the county arguing over, uh, I shouldn't use the word to argue, uh, there wouldn't be a competition for the money because we both want the same same thing and we got the same project. So I didn't know if this is something you'd already. I'm aware of it. I'm still waiting to see what the procedures are to access those funds. Um, it seems like they're quick to announce money's available, but then they're a little slower to tell you how to how you can get it and how you can use it. Um, but I did see what you what you're referring to, Don. So I'm keeping my eye on that, but uh, kind of waiting for a little more direction. I just, you know, just thought it'd run right in what yeah. the reason why we backed away from it at the time was who knows what's going to happen, but this is a different 
it's a waste in here. So just kind of like there's some things we've done with the stimulus money that we probably wouldn't have done. Yeah. It's only because it's available, and, we, and I could see the same thing here. Yeah. We may do something normally we wouldn't do, but because of being careful, well, if I just soon if they're going to issue it, uh, I just soon see us get it. Sure. You know, where we've, you know, I feel like we're probably one of the few counties that have something like this set aside and ready to go. I guess is what I mean, mm -hmm. and uh, that I like to see us if there's any way possible we could reopen that discussion. We kind of dropped that discussion. Well, if if there's funds available and and uh, the state is willing to to move it our direction, and we're in the growth area, that it'd be really interesting to to see what it would take. Like you said, what it all comes down to. A lot of times. Right. I understand a lot of times uh, the restrictions that come with some of these things is tougher than not doing it at all. So, but I think it'd be really worth our while to, if, if they're, if they're, the both sides and both parties is so agreeable that that it's not a not an arguing point. If it's something they both want to see happen, I could see it happening a whole lot easier. Yeah, there's a, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, KEDA is going to have a legislative day. Uh, I think the first week of February I'm signed up. To, I'll spend a day in Topeka and hopefully learn a lot more about that program and some others. Um, so we're, we're keeping our eyes on it. Um, sometimes they like a public-private partnership. Sometimes they like just municipality partnerships. Um, you know, exactly what is economic development in this funding pool is is going to be interesting to see how that's defined. But yeah, I, I agree. It's, you know, between the, the different funding opportunities, we're still waiting on the infrastructure bill and, and direction on that. Um, that was passed. And, and um, you know, as, as, as the administrator mentioned, I think last week, that a lot of flexibility on the, on the first round or third round or second round or whatever that was. But um, so yeah, another pool of money. The state does have a quite a bit of money and so they're starting to determine different pockets of use for it and this is one of them so we're keeping an eye on that but I appreciate you bringing it up I guess if we really think about it I guess there's another possibility is even the the Wellsville yep. area up there where they've never been able to uh, even talk about building a building to do something yep. where here you could talk about right you know, I mean uh, we've talked about it Yep. They never even talked about it. Yeah, I think there's opportunities throughout the county uh, that we need to look at, depending on what the rules and stipulations are. But I think there's, there's, you know, we're a target-rich environment. I like to say, as far as how we could use money. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Any other, anything else? Good to see you. Thank you, Paul. Commissioners, uh, Don, do you have anything? Else? Uh, that was my main topic. The only thing I would like to say is. Uh, with the passing of Daryl Watkins, a longtime county employee, just want to uh, uh, thank him for all his years that he gave to the county and to the community. And uh, uh, Daryl was a good guy to work with. And uh, like I said, it's hard to find people that will stay in their position for 20 years. And uh, Daryl has been very important to the community and, and uh, just, you know, want to uh, thank him publicly. That's all I got. Thanks for saying that, Don. Robert. Okay. Diane, do you have anything? I had a uh, meeting with the uh, local emergency planning committee uh, last Wednesday. Um, Thomas Winter was uh, elected as the chair, and uh, Auto Police Chief Adam Weingartner was elected as the Vice Chair, um, it was held by Zoom. We didn't have a lot of attendance, but um, again, looking to make sure that our county is prepared in case of any emergency. Um, and then I did call into the Zoom meeting yesterday for the NACO Central Region meeting. It was mostly about the final ruling for the stimulus funding, and at that point I was really... Uh, glad that we have
draft that is on top of it so that we aren't trying to muddle through that uh, ourselves as commissioners. And that's all I've got. Thank you, Ann. That was cool. Nothing? Okay. I went to a Zoom meeting last night with ECAN, and they're struggling like everyone else as far as uh, keeping everybody healthy and, and keeping uh, keeping all their programs going. But they've been uh, real lucky uh, so far. That uh, still inconvenient doing a, a Zoom meeting, trying to uh, communicate very good at, over that process. But we made it through okay, and. Uh, they're they're having problems with different services. Like they have they have plenty of money to do stuff, but it doesn't seem like they have people to do it. Like contracting to do the weatherization uh, projects they have, or provided basic uh, human services they have uh, uh, throughout the system. It's just uh, having contractors to uh, provide those services. So they're. Kind of like everybody else right now is uh, uh, finding staff, uh, keeping their staff healthy, and they're doing a lot of kind of cross uh, training between, it, between their staff so they can fill in if somebody goes down or needs to be quarantined for a while and that sort of thing. So uh, they're getting by and uh, and working hard to provide the services that he can provide. And, uh, that's about it. I don't have anything else. Nobody has anything else. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. We'll have study session next Monday. Yeah. Motion. Second. We're adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>